Leslie Tom Barnish, Chicago scene downtown at the Chicago History Museum, checking out this exhibit, Millions of Moments. It's an archival story, really, of what the Sun Times has captured over the years. And that has to do with my guest here. This is Richard. How are you doing, Richard? Hi, Tom. I'm fine. Thank you. So, Richard, this exhibit here parlays into what you've uh, collected for your own works. Um, why don't you introduce the, the book? It's Chicago Exposed with a writing partner and yourself, right? Sure. Hi. So my name is Rich Cahan, and I'm the co-author uh, of Chicago Exposed, which looks at 80 years of Chicago Sun-Times photography, starting in the 1940s, and it ends really very in contemporary times during the year of COVID. And the book was based on photographs from the Sun-Times, like this exhibit, Millions of Moments. And um, it's based on this incredible archive of, oh, five to 10 million photographs that Sun-Times photographers took. And all those photographs have been acquired and are now housed at the Chicago History Museum. And the book is a little different than the exhibit because the exhibit shows these photographs and the book really l takes a deeper dive looking at the photographs through the eyes of the photographers, the reporters, and historians who talk about each photograph. Right, and I think that's something to recognize for sure, which makes the, your book stand out from other books. It's just not a picture book. Like you said, each, photogra each photograph has a photographer telling the story, the reporter, or if those were not options, then a, at least a historian as well to talk right. about that time period. And even the subjects of photographs. We've tracked down people who were photographed and we contacted them oh, wow. and they remembered what happened that day that they were photographed. So it really gives a, it puts the photographs in context. And before we get started in the actual uh, photographs that we're going to talk about, just getting this archive together is a process in itself. People think, well, the newspaper has all these photos sitting some vault somewhere. And that might be the case at one time, but things have gotten complicated over time. Why don't you explain? It has. Um, during the late, uh, around 2007, 2008, the, sometimes it was, it was a very difficult time for them. And they were offered a million dollars to uh, give up their photographic archive and send them to, a, um, to an entrepreneur who is going to digitize each and every photograph and each and every negative and send them back to the Sun-Times. So the Sun-Times felt like they weren't losing much and they would have real access to each of their photographs. Uh, as it turned out, the deal didn't work exactly the way it planned and a lot of the uh, photographs ended up in, with different collectors and the History Museum acquired hundreds of thousands or actually millions of photographs from one collector near Chicago. Right, so you helped curate this exhibit here at the Chicago History Museum. I did. And you and your partner curated this book with the with this amazing archive of originally 80 photos, you kind of narrowed down to about 70 that are in the book Chicago Exposed. That kind of gives this narration of Chicago's history from at least in terms of the Sun-Times existence. Right, and we were really looking at photographs differently than Sun-Times uh, editors look at. Uh, I was actually a picture of the Sun-Times from 1983 to 99, and we were looking for pictures that meant something the next day, the day when p the paper came out. And now we were having a whole new, my colleague Michael Williams and I had a chance to go back to these photographs and think about which photographs perhaps taken in the 1940s speak to us in 2022. And that was different than the day-to-day -day things that uh, we understood the arc of history. And so photographs sometimes that were not important at the time became very important. And sometimes you know, the little political dispute that seemed so important at the time <laughs> meant nothing 50 years later. Right. So the, the first one that we're going to look at here is from World War II, right? Right. And this is a photograph of uh, a regimental infantry group returning to Chicago. Mm -hmm. and. Um, this is an important photograph because we think of World War II as fought primarily, or not primarily, but substantially by uh, uh, white men who went over to Europe and Japan. And we realized that uh, African Americans had an equal uh, responsibility and contribution to the war. And these are troops returning to the South Side. And speaking of the South Side, the next photo we have here is uh, Emmett Till's mother. Yeah. Uh, this is probably one of the most important photographs ever taken by the Sun-Times. Mm -hmm. uh, a, a version of it actually is on the cover of our book. Uh, as we all know, Mamie Till was determined to show what had happened to her son. And so when the casket was returned from Mississippi to Chicago, uh, this is her actually at the station waiting for the casket. And then a few days later, um, she opened the casket so people could understand what happened. And then switching gears completely to something a little bit different, uh, a raid at 64th and East Walton. Yeah, this is a raid of uh, women who were prostitutes or who were accused of being prostitutes. And uh, you can see on their faces their uh, dismay at being put in this position. And it's really a, 
uh, a period piece of uh, you, you, you might not expect this that prostitution was such a big issue at the time, and it right. was. And it was a it was taboo, especially in 1953. It was taboo. <laughs> These people were considered uh, morally uh, corrupt, <laughs> and uh, I, I don't think we take th that seriously anymore. I hope we don't. Right, and then the next one is kind of a real sticking point in Chicago history is the Our Lady of Angels. Yeah, this was a terrible fire that killed 95 uh, uh, girls and uh, members of the staff, teachers, and this is a funeral in an armory on the northwest side uh, of, of some of them. And you can see the incredible size of the room and the people who came. It really shook Chicago. In January 28th, 1961, firefighters, nine of them. Yeah, we've come to the point where there are fewer and fewer fires in Chicago and throughout, throughout the country and probably the world, but we have to remember that firefighting has always been dangerous, and this was a fire in which nine firefighters were killed. And then we switched gears again to the mobile classroom arrest, which I didn't realize was an issue even back then, back in the 60s. This was a really important time when the Chicago Public School <laughs> System uh, bought what they called Willis, they didn't call it Willis Wagons, but Chicagoans called it mobile classrooms. It was an attempt to uh, keep uh, to, to keep segregation alive in Chicago schools and many people protested and, and I love this picture because of the determination on the man's face and also the, look at the, the police officers and their, their look. And then Martin Luther King. Uh, I would say of all the photographs that the Sun-Times ever took, this is probably the most important. This is King who was pelted by rocks in Marquette Park when he came uh, for an open housing protest. And you can see the man, uh, a white man, shielding Martin Luther King. He's not pushing him down, he's actually a bodyguard of King. And this was a moment that I think was sobering to all of Chicago. Right, that was in 1966, and we fast forward to 1968 for the Democratic National Convention. The Sun-Times and the Daily News were spectacular in photographing the, the, the uh, convention, and this is our very favorite picture, uh, a man standing outside of the Conrad Hilton with a sign that, that says it all at that moment. And then George Wallace back in 1968. Yeah, this photograph surprised me because I would have had no idea that Wallace could come to Chicago and have such a welcome. It's, it's, it is also sobering. Uh, as it turns out, uh, millions of people voted for Wallace in that 1968 election, and uh, Illinois and Chicago were, were among them. And then one of the more famous photos for not a great, for an infamous thing, the L crash. Yeah, this was something that if you rode the L, uh, in the 70s, and probably people r remember this forever, uh, this was an L that, that fell from the tracks at Staten Lake, and this was a very dramatic picture taken at night by a Sun-Times photographer. And then you have Jane Byrne at Cabrini Green. Yeah, I love this picture. Uh, Jane Byrne uh, decided to live in Cabrini Green with her husband uh, for, it turned out to be several days, or I think it was um, close to two weeks, and uh, I'm not exactly sure why she wanted to do this, but I think her point was that uh, it was safe to live there, and it was safe if you had a bodyguards, and right. it was a very difficult place to live, and she, uh, uh, it was a controversial move. Absolutely, and that was uh, 1981 when Cabrini Green was still around, and it was still affordable as far as its presence on the northwest Absolutely. side. Absolutely. It was quite a stunt. It was quite yeah, a political stunt. Yes, it was. Speaking of stunts, though, this might be one of the biggest stunts in Chicago history. It's certainly, uh, it's ranking up there with the sports history as Disco Demolition Night. Yeah, that was a night when uh, DJ Steve Dahl uh, decided that he was going to form a protest against disco music and burn <laughs> disco records. Um, ironically, it was the only baseball game that my mother ever attended. We went that night and we saw the first game. And uh, we did we did leave be between the, be before this second game was supposed to start, and that was her impression of baseball. I'm never again. Not, huh? Well, I'm surprised <laughs> she never went back. And then we go to Washington being sworn in April 29th, 1983. Right, and I uh, this was uh, just a regular swearing in picture, but I love this one so Monumentous, much. Monumentous, though. Uh, it was certainly monumental because uh, Harold Washington was the first African American mayor, and I love this picture because of Jane Burns' expression, her look up there. That was that moment uh, captured by photographer Keith Hale. And then Obama's big night, another giant pivotal moment for yeah. our nation, not, let alone Chicago. 20 years later, and most of the pictures of the book are from the 20th century, but we did include a section on more recent pictures, and obviously this was one of the most important nights in Chicago history, a night that uh, 
There were probably a couple hundred thousand people, but pe uh, there's probably a couple million people who say they were there that night. And certainly the Sun-Times was there to capture this. And then making it a first full circle moment, here we are in a pandemic gripped world where we're fighting for, um, pe you know, people are arguing whether or not mass mandates are a thing or not a thing, right. but you guys captured a COVID nurse yeah. or nurses. This was taken by Ashley Rezin, and it's an important picture because of her courage. Uh, this was just, I think this was a month or two after mm -hmm. we learned about COVID and her determination to uh, go into a hospital and show 24 hours or a, a, lo a long workday of, of a nurse, uh, I thought was, was, was just spectacular. And needless to say, the, the work by health uh, nurses and doctors and everyone who worked at hospital was even more uh, exemplary during those times. These photos here and in your book just tell this incredible story that is Chicago. Yeah, I, I love the fact that the History Museum has shown this now because when we think of history, we oftentimes think of the far past, the right. unremembered, but, but we are a part of history and we all have lived through this. Um, I've lived through most of these events. Uh, if you were born in the 1930s, you've lived through all these events and, 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 and there's history for people who are 20 years old. So the hist history continues and it's nice that a museum recognizes that history lives on. Right, and I think it's important for people who either have moved to the city in the last few years, who aren't from here, to know about our city and to know, and people who have lived here who just don't know our history, who have been lifelong Chicagoans, it's a great thing to know. I think it's important for the future of the city. Right, and we called it Chicago Exposed because we didn't want it to be kind of a souvenir look at Chicago. The pictures in the book are really serious. Uh, uh, racial uh, discrimination, um, upheaval on many fronts, and it's, it's not a happy book, it's a really serious book. And that's where I think the words that people wrote around each picture really helps us understand the significance of each photo. Well, incredible work. Thank you very much for joining me, Rich. I appreciate it. For people who want to purchase the book or to find information on it, what's the best way for them to the do it? The best way is to go to our website, cityfilespress.com. Uh, you can buy it from us. You can buy it from other distributors online. Um, it comes faster by them, but from us, it comes directly from us, and we're happy to sign the books. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate your time, and uh, again, you, wonderful too. job. Uh, that is the Chicago scene. I'm here at the uh, Chicago History Museum. Be sure to check out the book that Richard curated and put together. Thank you, Richard. I appreciate it. One more time, that website? It's cityfilespress, all one word, dot com. There you go.